When it comes to powering most electronic products, you have three choices. You have rechargeable batteries, replaceable batteries, or AC power. Each option has advantages and disadvantages, which I'm gonna talk about in this video. Rechargeable batteries are the most common method of powering most modern consumer electronic products and lithium ion or lithium polymer are the types of batteries used the most often. Lithium ion batteries are rigid, hard batteries typically used in laptop computers or larger products that don't need to be ultra thin. A single lithium ion battery cell is a little larger than a standard AA alkaline battery, but in most cases, several of these cells are grouped together and encased in a plastic shell. Lithium polymer batteries, on the other hand, are more flexible and can be made much thinner than a lithium ion battery. Lithium polymer batteries cost about 10 to 20% more than a lithium ion battery. So for larger products, it might make more sense to use a standard lithium ion battery. Even for larger products, lithium polymer batteries, which can be made into a variety of shapes, can allow you to pack more battery volume into your product. This allows you to increase your battery life without increasing your product size. If your product is really small and thin, then you're probably going to want to use a lithium polymer battery. One significant disadvantage of rechargeable batteries is that they add a significant cost to your product. The biggest cost is typically the battery itself. Most products that use replaceable batteries don't include the batteries themselves, so your product cost doesn't include the cost of the batteries. Also, you have to factor in the cost of the charger circuit itself. With lithium batteries, you will also require a special device called a fuel gauge, which monitors the charge level of the battery. These add a little additional cost. Finally, you need to include an external power charger of some sort, most commonly a USB charger with your product. All of this adds additional cost and complexity. Luckily, there are numerous integrated battery charger solutions available that can take care of the complicated stuff involved in charging a lithium battery. One of the other issues with rechargeable batteries is that they require additional safety certifications. A lot of the time you can buy stock lithium rechargeable batteries that are already pre-certified, but your choices are gonna be more limited. Most commercial products ultimately make a custom battery, so the battery can use the maximum available space inside the product to increase the battery life and capacity. Once you reach higher manufacturing volumes, you might want to switch to using a custom lithium battery, and at that time you will be forced to obtain the required certifications for the battery. And finally, rechargeable lithium batteries have some serious safety issues. You've likely seen stories, I'm sure, in the past of lithium batteries exploding in Samsung phones and, you know, other products. And lithium batteries are potentially very dangerous. So if you're going to design one of these in your product, you need to be aware of these safety concerns. And safety issues are why there are certifications required for lithium batteries. Lithium batteries need a charger and fuel gauge chips as well as protection circuitry which prevents overcharging or shorting the battery, which may cause it to explode or catch fire. I recommend that you purchase lithium batteries that already have a printed or a protection printed circuit board built into the battery. That way you don't have to worry about design issues causing your product to explode. That's never good. Okay, so how do you recharge your lithium battery? Well, you have a few choices and using an external power adapter is generally the easiest way to recharge a battery. This adapter plugs into an AC electrical outlet, then outputs a DC voltage to your product. Just make sure to use a pre-certified power adapter so you don't have to get UL certification for your product. Any product that plugs directly into an AC electrical outlet is going to need UL certification, and it's pretty expensive, typically costing more than about $10,000. The certification is for your product itself, separate from the certification that the lithium batteries themselves require. So definitely use an external power adapter that's already UL certified or CE certified if you're selling this in the European Union. Since the pre-certified adapter takes care of the AC to DC conversion and your product never directly connects to the AC electrical outlet, then no UL certification is required. USB is another power option that's essentially just a standardized type of external AC DC adapter like I talked about already. But in addition to using an external USB charger, you can also charge your product from a USB port. 
USB is probably the most common method of recharging a battery, and it's the method that I've used the most when designing new products, and it's typically what I recommend. It's very standardized, and USB allows you to have a pre-certified adapter, and most of your customers, in fact, already have multiple USB chargers they can use with your product. If your product, on the other hand, has a specialized power charger that only works with your product, then it's a pain if the customer can't find the original charger. But if you allow them to use any USB charger, they can use the one that you include with your product, or they can use any of the other ones that they already own. For newer products, be sure you go with a USB-C connector, which is not only easier for the user, but also a lot more durable than the older USB micro connector. Be aware, though, that there are different levels of USB charging. What's called a standard downstream port, or just SDP for short, is basically a USB port on, say, a laptop computer. And a standard downstream port can supply up to 500 milliamps of current under USB specifications 1.0 and 2.0. But on the other hand, a USB 3.0 Standard downstream port on a computer can supply up to 900 milliamps of current. The other USB option is called a dedicated charging port, or DCP, which is when you have a USB charger that plugs into an electrical outlet. And a DCP can supply up to 1.5 amps of current. It's a pretty simple matter to have your device detect whether your product is connected to a SDP or a DCP. If it's plugged into a USB port on a laptop, then you can limit the battery charge current to 500 milliamps or 900 milliamps, depending on the USB version. On the other hand, if it's plugged into a DCP charger, then you can increase the charge current up to one and a half amps. In fact, for USB 3.0, this current can be as high as three amps. And with the newest USB power delivery specification, it can provide up to 240 watts of power. Regardless of the charging adapter you use, you must be sure you don't exceed the maximum charge current specification for your product. Another charging option is solar charging. The main downside with using a solar panel is that, well, it adds a lot of size to your product. If your product is really small, it's going to limit how much space can be devoted to a solar panel area. And obviously, the larger the solar panel, the more current it can generate. But for most products, the current produced by solar panels is going to be really small. So this is going to be a slow charging process for your battery, and it's not going to charge anywhere near as quickly as using a USB charger, for instance. Another option is to use wireless induction charging, or Qi. Wireless chargers transfer energy via an electromagnetic field. This is accomplished by using two coils to transfer energy using electromagnetic induction, similar to how a transformer works. Qi is the most common standard for wireless induction charging, but there are also a lot of downsides to wireless charging. In most cases, I recommend sticking with the standard USB charger, at least initially, unless you feel that wireless charging is a critical feature for your product. If it's a critical feature for your product, then by all means, use wireless induction charging. But if you want to add it just because you think it's a cool feature, then you're adding a lot of unnecessary cost and complexity to your product for no good reason. There are some other alternative power sources that can be used for charging a battery, but most of these are not very practical for current products. But I want to quickly mention them because in limited cases, they may be a viable option for you. Also, as the technology behind them improves, they may become more practical in the future. One of these is radio frequency power harvesting. And RF power harvesting uses the energy of any ambient radio waves. That energy is received via an antenna and converted into a current that can be used as a power source. But pulling free energy out of the air sounds pretty great, I know, doesn't it? The problem is that the energy in any ambient radio waves is going to be extremely small. In most cases, it's going to generate way too little power to be of much use. There is also power derived from motion. For example, you shake the device and that motion is converted into electricity, which can be used to charge a battery. A few products use this method, but once again, I tend to recommend that you stick with the standard charging method, unless it's a fundamental feature of your product, like if your product was an emergency radio, for instance. There are a few interesting experimental options like harvesting power from heat or chemical reactions, 
but I've not seen any consumer products that really use any of these methods. So moving on to the second option to power your product, and that is to use replaceable batteries instead of rechargeable batteries. The majority of modern consumer electronic products use rechargeable batteries, but for many products, replaceable batteries may be a better option, like for products that are very cost sensitive or that can't easily be placed near an AC outlet for recharging. The first question you need to answer in regards to a replaceable battery is whether you want to use an alkaline or a lithium battery. Now here I'm referring to disposable lithium batteries, technically known as lithium metal batteries. And these are not to be confused with rechargeable lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries. Alkaline batteries are available in all the standard sizes that we're all familiar with, including the 9 volt, AA, AAA, C, and D sizes. Lithium metal batteries are also available in most of these sizes, but they are also available as a coin cell batteries, or sometimes you'll just see them a watch battery. Choosing your best battery chemistry will depend on your product's application. For instance, if your product is operated in cold weather, then a lithium battery is a much better solution than an alkaline battery. Alkaline batteries perform horribly in cold weather. If your product will be operated in cold temperature, then a lithium metal battery is a much better choice. You also need to ask how small is your product and what are the power requirements. So if your product is really small and uses a small amount of power, like for instance, it's a Bluetooth low energy product, then lithium coin cell batteries may be your best choice. An alkaline battery typically has a voltage of one and a half volts, as do lithium metal batteries that come in standard alkaline battery sizes. Lithium coin cells, on the other hand, provide a voltage of three volts, which can impact your selection of the best battery type. If your product requires a supply voltage higher than the battery voltage, then a special device known as a boost switching regulator will be needed to step up the battery voltage. There's one hidden negative to using replaceable batteries, and that's you have to design a battery access door so the user can change the batteries. Obviously, with rechargeable batteries, the customer doesn't need to access the battery. This allows your product to be sealed totally shut. You can get by with only two pieces of molded plastic, say, for instance, a, a top part of your enclosure and a bottom part of your enclosure that fit together to enclose your product. But as soon as you add a battery door, well, now you're adding an additional and separate third piece of custom plastic. And this piece is going to require a custom injection mold and molds are just really expensive. One trick to get around this is I recommend that you find an existing off the shelf battery access door from a vendor that already makes something similar. Then design your enclosure around that off the shelf battery access door, which will eliminate the need for you to have an additional injection mold. And finally, your third option for powering your product is AC power. First of all, the big negative with powering your product from an AC electrical outlet directly is it requires expensive UL certification, and you're talking $10,000 or more to get your product UL certified. There are also safety issues involved, hence the need for UL certification. No one's going to electrocute themselves with a AA battery, but with 120 volt AC, someone can be seriously electrocuted or injured. Unless your product incorporates AC components like an AC motor or an AC a heating element, then you will at some point need to most likely perform an AC to DC conversion. In addition to paying for expensive UL certification, internal AC DC conversion circuitry can add size to your product. This is why in most cases I recommend using an external AC to DC converter if your product actually uses DC power. Like I mentioned with rechargeable batteries, make sure that if you use an external AC-DC converter that it's pre-certified. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out this video here where I show you how to design an actual battery charger circuit.